In this video, we'll cover the basics of thermal energy storage systems. Thermal energy storage can be accomplished by changing the temperature or phase of a medium to store energy. This allows the generation of energy at a time different from its use to optimize the varying cost of energy based on the time of use rates, demand charges, and real-time pricing. Utility incentives could also be available to reduce the upfront cost of installation. By running chillers at night when the electrical rates are less than daytime rates, the operational cost of the facility can be reduced. Thermal Energy Storage TES Strategies There are two basic energy storage strategies, latent heat systems and sensible heat systems. Chilled Water Thermal Stratification Sensible Heat Stratification is used within the tank as a strategy for thermal layering of the stored water. Colder water is denser and will settle toward the bottom of the tank, while the warmer water will naturally seek to rise to the top. As water enters and leaves the tank, it's important to make sure not to disturb or mix the stratified layers. This is done with the use of diffusers within the tank on the inlet and outlet piping. When charging the tank, the warm water is taken from the top of the tank and sent to the chiller, while the chilled water is returned to the tank near the bottom. Chilled water storage tanks require a large footprint to store the large volume of water required for these systems. Approximately 15 cubic feet per ton hour is required for a 15 degree Fahrenheit 8.3 degrees Celsius temperature difference. The greater the delta T of the water, the smaller the tank can be. Tanks can store millions of gallons of water or much smaller amounts. There are dozens of various layouts for thermal energy storage systems, but we'll cover the basic theory for its use. In this image, there is the typical primary chilled water loop that produces the chilled water, then there is the condenser water loop that uses a cooling tower to reject the heat to the atmosphere. A secondary loop that feeds chilled water to the air handler's coils. And the last piece is to add in the thermal energy storage tank tied into the primary chilled water loop. The system can run using just the chillers or the chiller could be run at night to charge the storage tank when electrical rates are cheaper. The three-way valve will close, forcing the chilled water to go through the tank, while during the day when the electrical rates are higher, the chilled water can be pulled from the tank in a full storage system and sent to the air handler coils without the use of the chillers. Partial storage systems use the stored chilled water to supplement the main chiller equipment when they have reached their full capacity and additional cooling is required. Ice storage systems, latent heat. Latent heat transfer strategies are more complex. There are several strategies for producing ice, one of which is to circulate a glycol solution through coils submerged within the tank. Ice then accumulates on the outside of the coil within the tank. In this image, we have the same water loops as the chilled water storage tank system. There is the primary chilled water loop, condenser water loop, and secondary chilled water loop. The difference with this system is that a glycol solution will circulate through the system in order to produce ice on the coils within the tanks. Glycol prevents the water from freezing. A heat exchanger will separate the primary and secondary loops. The three-way valve and control sequence will control the flow of water to and from the tank. Ice storage systems take less room for storage than chilled water system because of ice's greater capacity to store energy per unit area. The storage volume ranges from 2 to 4 cubic feet per ton hour for an ice system compared to 15 cubic feet per ton hour for a chilled water system. The application for energy storage systems varies by industry and can include district cooling, 
data centers, combustion turbine plants, and the use of hot water TES systems. Utilities often structure their rates for the usage of electrical power to coincide with their need to reduce loads during peak usage periods. Producing ice or chilled water at night can also increase the efficiency of the overall system as ambient temperatures are cooler at night. This is especially true with the use of air-cooled chillers. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.